So now let's implement Spring Data JPA in this project. So the ultimate aim is to basically store this data in the database and also fetch from it. Now, if you can see, we do have a controller for all the different uh, requests. We got get, uh, post, put, and delete. Basically, uh, the request goes to service, and then from service, we have done uh, basically we have done the hard coding of the values, and that's what we are getting right. Now we want to work with database. So what are the things we need? The first thing we need is a database. So basically, we, if you see, we have talked about different layers. We want to work with database. So we have to choose a database now. And we are going for H2, as I mentioned before. Uh, next, to connect database with our Spring application, we need uh, the connectors as well. But once you get, uh, so yeah, we need a connector as well. So we'll get that. So we need a connector between these two. Uh, so that's that is basically your H2 driver. So we need this. Also, uh, we have to create a layer, repository layer, which will make it work. So again, let's try to do that in this video or we'll divide it into two parts. Let's see how it goes. So the first thing is you need to get H2 and the driver. Also, the Spring Data JPA capability. Now, how you're going to add that? See, if you want to add a basic feature in your project or uh, any external libraries, you have to do that with the help of pom.xml file. So if you open this, what we got till now is we got uh, web, and that's it, that's the main thing we have. Of course, we have DevTool as well, but that is optional. Apart from this web, we need to get the data JPA and H2. Now, when you create this project for the first time, you know, if you remember how we created this project, so I will open the Chrome and we'll go to start.spring.io. Uh, remember when we created this project, we have, to spe we have to specify some values here, and then we have to add a dependency. If you don't do that, let's see what dependency you get by default. So I will click on explore and I will increase the size a bit. So this is, okay, this is Gradle. I want the Maven, so I will say explore. Okay, now you can see by default, you only get the Spring Boot Starter, not even web. So for that, you have to add web. So what you do is you go to add dependency and you say Spring Web, that's the first thing you add. And once you add Spring Web, you will get Spring Starter Web. So you get this. But what if you want to work with JPA? In that case, you click here and search for JPA. So you get an option of Spring Data JPA. You can click on this. And now you got two, so I will click on Explore. And if you go down, uh, yeah, so we got Spring Data JPA. This is something we need. Apart from this, I also need H2. So we got H2 Database Driver. Click on this and it will give you this driver. If you click on Explore, uh, not just driver, it will also give you a runtime. So basically it will give you the H2 database. See, H2 is an in-memory database, right? So if you work with some other databases, let's say uh, Postgres, MySQL, you need to basically install them on your machine, then do some configuration. It's a good thing because in the real life project, we do that. But since we are into learning phase, H2 works for us. It's an in-memory database and you don't have to do a lot of setup. You just add the dependency and your work is done. It will give you some default settings, just use it and make it work. Okay, so we don't have these things in our project, right? So one thing you can do, you can again go to start.spring.io and copy this dependency. So you can copy this and you can copy this. Uh, that's one way. Or instead of going for start.spring.io, we can search for Maven repository and here you can search for it. So I'm searching for Spring Data JPA. I will click on this. That's the first one we got. And then we have to choose a version. So which version to choose here? Now you have to choose a version which you are already using in your project for web. So I will go back to my project. And in fact, you don't have to mention the version because we have mentioned the version here as a parent. So you can it will simply use this. So you can mention the uh, driver or you can mention the dependency without the version. So I can pick up uh, 3.2.6. And copy this. Okay, it looks like this is not the one we are looking for. Okay, that's that's one of the confusion we have. Uh, if you see, we have two options: Spring Data JPA and Spring Boot Data JPA. Now, since we are working with Spring Boot project, we have to use this, not that one. And again, I will select 3.2.6. Uh, yeah, this looks good. So I was looking for this boot uh, word. Uh, this is important, so I will just copy this. Go back to the project and paste it here. And of course, I can get rid of this particular version number and reload the Maven changes. Okay, this is done. The next thing you need is the H2. So I will just go back here and you have to get for H2. Uh, again, the same website. I will search for H2, click here. And which version? So you can see there are a lot of vulnerabilities. You can go with this one. 
or maybe latest one also looks good. I will click on this. Uh, I just need to verify if I'm getting the right one. So yeah, so just com.h2 database, h2 artifact. Okay, I'll get this and paste it here. So these are the two things we need. So I will just remove this. And now by doing this, of course, you have to re reload the Maven changes. By doing this, you are basically making sure that in your project now you have data JPA and also you got H2. How do you verify this? What I will do is I will start the project to see if certain things are working out. Otherwise, you have to make some changes. Okay, so we got the error. It says uh, failed because we have not specified the URL. See, whenever you add any driver, we have to make sure, not just driver, whenever you add Spring Data JPA, basically it will ask you for the URL for the uh, database. See, whenever you connect with database, we have to specify certain things. Uh, it's not just for H2, any DBMS. You have to mention the JDBC steps where you have to specify the connection URL. Uh, so that's something it is. it says it is missing. So where should we put the URL? So that should be done in the application properties. So let's go down. So in order to do that, you have to say spring dot data source dot URL, and you can mention the URL here. So what's the URL? So it is JDBC colon, then you have to mention the database name, if it is MySQL, SMySQL, Postgres, Postgres, but here we are saying H2. Then in H2, we have to mention it is an in-memory database, mem. Uh, we can also get a full storage. It is also option, permanent storage option is there, but you're going for in-memory, so we'll say mem. And then whatever your database name is, so I will say test DB, or maybe I can say Telisco. That's our choice. We can mention whatever database name we have. So that's done, right? Now by doing this, let's start the application because that's what it, is, it was looking for. And I hope it will work. Okay, we got another error. It's not able to find the driver. Uh, should I remove this version? I remove the version. Let's also mention the driver name. I thought it will pick up. Let's try it. So we'll say spring dot data source dot driver class name. So then things you have to mention for the properties. So it's org dot h2 dot driver. I hope this will work now. So basically we do this in the JDBC as well. So you have to mention uh, the URL, you have to mention the driver name, also username, password, but I want to go for default one. If it is not accepting, we'll type it. We don't have a choice. So let's restart the application. So let's learn from the errors. Okay, more errors. Okay, looks like I made a mistake while mentioning the driver name. Okay, it looks like it's not org. It should be, okay, just com dot It is there. Cannot load driver. Let me check the dependency once. Okay, looks like I've got it. It should be runtime. Because if you see, when we were trying to do this, it says runtime. In the dependency, I got it test. So I forgot to change the, the scope. Let's see if this works now after making those changes. Uh, so basically, you have to make sure that your H2 is there available in the runtime. Okay, looks like there's no error. Yeah, there's no error and the Tomcat is running. So yeah, so sometimes it's good to get errors. You learn certain things there. And now what we have is we have the H2 database ready. We don't have data in there yet, but the database is there. But how do I access that database? So since we, we are not installed in the system, one way to access it is using the URL. So I'll say localhost colon 8090 uh, because that's the port number we are using slash H2 console. So to access the database, we have to say H2 console, enter. It will give you this page and you can see there are certain things which are mentioned here. So we have the driver name, which is this. The URL, we have the database name as Telisco, so I will use that. Uh, the username is by default SA. I have not specified that in the properties. The password is blank. Test connection, it says successful. I will click on connect and that's our database. Nothing is there because we have not done anything yet. But at least we have the JPA uh, connected and we got H2 connected. And now it's time to create that layer, the repository layer. But let's do that in the next video. So let's create a repository layer and make it work.